the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coats present Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, the King's Men, and Billy Mills Orchestra. The show opens with Don't Hold Everything. troubles in his life, but now he voluntarily adds the troubles of a host. He's giving a spaghetti dinner for a few male friends tonight, which he's going to prepare himself. And here at the corner delicatessen laying in supplies for the evening, we find Flipper McGee and Molly. Have you got everything, dearie? Well, now, let me see. I got uh, tomatoes, sugar, chocolate bars... Vinegar, ginger snaps, celery and olives, cheese, two pounds of garlic. Can you think of anything I ain't got, Molly? I can't even think of what you have got without shuddering. <laughs> uh, how about you, sis? Uh, you give me everything on that list? No, well, certainly, but uh, you're giving us spaghetti dinner, ain't it? <laughs> yes, it ain't. I mean, uh, yes, I am. <laughs> Well, in that case, and excuse the presumption, please, uh, but maybe you'd need some spaghetti. No! Oh. <laughs> spaghetti! I knew there was something else I needed. <laughs> Give me about five bucks worth of spaghetti, sis. And certainly. It's uh, ten cents a pound. That's fifty pounds spaghetti. Oh. Why don't you make it a hundred pounds, McGee? It's always good warmed up. <laughs> ah, I hate leftovers. Now, let me see. If I put... Uh, excuse me, folks. Uh, say, Mrs. Goldfarb. Yes? I'm from the wholesale house. Here's a bill for that last order of cheese. Oh, yes. I'll take care of it as soon as I hear from the FHA. Okay, thanks. <laughs> well, what's the FHA got to do with paying for your cheese, Mrs. Goldfarb? Uh, it's cottage cheese. Oh. <laughs> Is that all, Mr. McGee, please? Yeah, I guess that's all. Sis. Incidentally, how's business? This delicatessen make much money? That with all the pens. For income tax business, we manage to scrape our lungs. <laughs> but if you're thinking of buying the store, it's our gold mine. <laughs> well, hello there, daughter. Hello, Johnny. What you doing? <laughs> He's doing his shopping, Mr. Old Timer. Want to give a spaghetti dinner for a few friends, Old Timer? You're invited. My house at 7.30. Thanks, Johnny. I'll be there. They say the daughter here is a wonderful cook. <laughs> oh, but McGee's cooking this dinner himself, Mr. Old Time. Yeah. Hey? Oh, well, <clears throat> say, come to think of it, daughter, I got a previous engagement. I'm sorry, Johnny. <laughs> That's okay, Old Timer. If you change your mind later on and want to come, just hang a lantern in the Old North Church. <laughs> sure. One if by land and two if by <laughs> That's pretty good, daughter. But that ain't the way I hear it. <laughs> the way I hear it, one feller says to the feller, Say, says, Ever hear this Fibber McGee and Molly on the radio? Oh. Lots of meat in their programs, ain't there? Must be, says to the feller. I sure get fed up quick. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry 
I can't come to your dinner tonight, Johnny. But say, daughter, what you doing while young Johnny here gives his party? <laughs> I don't know, Mr. Oldtimer. Go to a movie, I guess. That suits me. I'll call for you at 7 o'clock. Got to run down now and get me some sense in. So long, Johnny. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm glad he ain't coming anyway. As the laundress says, when she disconnected the flat iron at 5 o'clock, I'm afraid I ain't got any time for wet blankets. <laughs> uh, excuse me, was there anything else you wanted, please? Well, I guess not, sis. I, I can get along with what I got here. Boy, I can hardly wait to get started. Uh, are you having any cooking experience, March? <laughs> Have I? Why, sis, I've been cooking since I was knee-high to the oven door. Well, somebody ought to stick a fork in you. You're about done. <laughs> Why, even when I was a little kid in grade school, the children would point me out and whisper, his father was a chef on an ocean liner. My, my, fancy that. Son of a sea cook, McGee, I was known as you in there. Oh, dear. Son of a sea cook, McGee, killer diller of the cold cuts, king of the caviar cutlers, and cutest kid that ever cooked a kettle of kippers for country club, campfire, cafeteria, or clam bake. Cautious and crafty at concealing the calories and coconut cake for curb conscious cuties kittenishly crowded in cozy cafes, and the caniest coot that ever combed the countryside for corn on the cob that couldn't conceivably be commanded by the com commoner kind to catch the cat stand customers. Crowned by the Cook's Convention in Kickapoo, Kansas, as the classiest cupid that ever cut a cantaloupe, covered with compliments, cups, and confetti, but play something, boys, I gotta cook this thick at it. Well, those of you who are sitting in your living rooms listening to Fibber and Molly, just imagine yourselves for a moment driving down the street in your automobile. It's a bright, sunny afternoon, and nearly everybody's out. Say, there's a good-looking car just parking at the curb. That can't be the Livingston's old bus. Why, yes, it is. But what have they done to make it look like new? Well, I'll tell you what they probably did. They gave it the new beauty treatment with Johnson's Car New, the sensational new product that both cleans and wax polishes in one easy operation. What's more, as soon as their neighbors hear how easy and how inexpensive wax polishing is with Car New, lots of other cars in that neighborhood are going to blossom forth with that showroom shine. It's not so long ago that cleaning and wax polishing your car cost real money and several hours of hard work. Johnson's Car New has changed all that. Now both jobs are done in half the time at negligible cost. Get a can of Johnson's Car New right away from your regular wax dealer, auto supply store, or service station. You'll say with everybody else, your car looks like new when you use Car New. <laughs> She bake a cherry pie, Billy boy, Billy boy. Can she bake a cherry pie, charming Billy? <laughs> McGee. Huh? What's the wash boiler doing in the kitchen? Well, that's what I'm going to make the spaghetti in, Molly. What? Want to have plenty for everybody. You know how Wilcox eats. <laughs> but I happen to know that Mr. Wilcox is on a diet, dearie. Oh, stomach gone back on him? No, it's gone front on him. <laughs> What are these golf balls doing here? Oh, I'm using them as models for the meatballs. The <laughs> only thing that puzzles me is how to get the dimples in them. Maybe if I give each one a little... Oh, hello? Oh, hello, Nick. Huh? No, I ain't. I'm giving this dinner and it's going to be strictly stag. No women allowed. <laughs> Nick Topopoulos. Did he want to bring somebody with him? Yeah. Wanted to know if I was going to have Charlotte Roos. And I told him... No. <laughs> Charlotte Roos is a dessert, dearie. Well, I don't care. She is? <laughs> Why didn't he say so? 
Chuck, hey, where'd I put that egg beater? It's in your hip pocket. Oh. Oh, yes. What do you want to beat eggs for? The meat sauce. You don't put eggs in meat sauce. You do the way I... Now, look, Molly, I don't mind your hanging around the kitchen while I cook, but I do object to your telling me how to do things. Well, now, would it wound your delicate culinary sensibilities if I told you you just dropped a cuff button in the meat sauce? <laughs> That's okay. I'll tell the fellas that surprise for the guy that eats the most. <laughs> I hope that isn't George Rector. Come in. Oh, Mrs. Uppington. Hi, Uppy. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? Hey, hey, I'm Mr. McGee, Uppy. <laughs> Don't let the apron fool you. <laughs> That's Mrs. McGee over there in the slacks. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Uppington. Oh, how do you do, my dear? I, I just stopped in a... Well, my goodness, what is going on here? <laughs> well, McGee's giving a spaghetti dinner for a few friends. A stag party. A stag party? Yeah, oh, stag party. <laughs> How very intriguing. <laughs> I didn't realize that you were a gourmet, Mr. McGee. Who, me? Why, shucks, Uppy. I'm the greatest go... What was that again? <laughs> gourmet, dearie. Huh? That means somebody who, uh, who, uh, uh, somebody... Well, for goodness sakes, don't you know what a gourmet is? <laughs> no, I don't. And until we find out, we better not mention it over the radio. <laughs> you know how people are. <laughs> Uh, have you a special recipe for cooking spaghetti, Mr. McGee? Oh, sure. This recipe's been in the McGee family for generations. Mm. All us McGees are partial to Italian food. Why, I had an aunt once. Auntie Pasto, we called her. She was... <laughs> hey, Molly. Toss me another egg, will you? Here, McGee. Oh, oh I missed it. <clears throat> Try again. Oh, my goodness, Miss McGee. That egg splattered all over me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Uppy, but... If you insist on hanging around a china shop, you mustn't complain if somebody pulls a bull. <laughs> Please, Mr. McGee. I must say that I never expected that I should be subjected to a bombardment of eggs when I came... Though, on the other hand, I might have known that I would be the butt of one of your yokes. A good day. <laughs> The butt of one of your yokes. Now she is being a silly girl. <laughs> Just the same, McGee. Why must you always be hurting her feet? Oh, I can't help it, Molly. As the puppy said when the lady hung a wire brush on the Christmas tree, she's got a gift for rubbing me the wrong way. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, I can she bake a cherry pie? Boy. Listen, McGee. Huh? You hear that? Who's that, Shep Fields? <laughs> I didn't invite him. I wonder why no, he... No, no, that's the water in the wash boiler, dearie. It's boiling. Oh. Here, I'll turn it down. Okay. Go on side there now, Molly, while I toss in the spaghetti. <laughs> Looked like enough. Better heave in another armful. Oh. That ought to be. Say, McGee, was your father really a chef on an ocean liner? Absolutely. Well, it wasn't exactly an ocean liner. It was on the Great Lakes. <laughs> oh. And it wasn't exactly a liner, come to think of it. It, it was a tugboat. <laughs> Marley wasn't really the chef, you understand. He was the next thing to it because nobody else could peel a potato like Papa. <laughs> of course, he only made one cruise from Chicago to Milwaukee. <laughs> hey, Molly, where's that jug of molasses? You're standing on it. I am? Oh. <laughs> Gee, that's a relief. The way I was wobbling there, I thought my heels were getting run over. <laughs> Oh, can she bake a cherry pie, Billy boy, Billy boy? Can she bake a cherry pie, charming Billy? She can bake a cherry pie as quick as a cat can wink its eye. But she's, but she's the old thing and, and cannot, cannot leave her, her mother. <laughs> Mother's getting up in the world. <laughs> McGee, hmm? what on earth are you doing with that molasses? Now, don't get your finger waving a fret, Molly. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, but why molasses in spaghetti? It puts a tread onto it. It keeps it from slipping. <laughs> now, see, while that's cooking, I better stuff some olives. You can buy stuffed olives, you know. Oh, they're, they're mass production stuff. No personality. I see. What are you going to stuff them with? Olives. No, I mean, what are you going to stuff the olives with? Olives? 
I'm going to take some big olives and hollow them out and stuff them with little olives. <laughs> Clever idea. It's little touches like that that make a dinner party so dull. Come in, thank goodness. Oh, hi, hello. Hey, you're a little early, ain't you? <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Wilcox, and watch. This may be your last chance to see a Model A turret top knee action case of heartburn on the assembly line. <laughs> Well, hey, look, about this dinner you're giving tonight, Fibber, I'm afraid that I Well, can't... now, don't tell us you're not coming, Mr. Wilcox. Well, look, I hate to do this to Fibber, but I promised a fella I'd show him how to polish his car tonight. Now, wait a minute, Harlow. You knew this dinner was tonight. You can't... Now, let me finish. So I went over to this fellow's house on the way over here, and I told him I had a dinner engagement. He said, oh, that's too bad. And I said, no, it isn't. Let's polish your car now. Uh-oh. So I got out the Johnson's car new, and we did it. You did? Yeah. Well, then why can't you come to the dinner? Well, I was getting to that. You know how simple it is to use car new. You just apply it, let it dry, and wipe it off, and you get a beautiful, gleaming finish. I'll say so. As quick and easy for cars as Johnson's glow coat is for floors and linoleum. Yeah, we know, but... Yeah, so, I was through long before I thought I would be, and I came right over here. I hate to be a nuisance, but do you mind if I stick around till dinner time? Oh, oh, for goodness sake. (laughs) Harlow, I know you ain't a heavy drinker, and you don't gamble, and you never look at another girl, but... Frankly, don't your wife ever get a little jealous of S.C. Johnson and Son Incorporated? (laughs) Well, what could she do about it, dearie? When your husband sells floor polish, how can you call him on the carpet? (laughs) Ah, dear. But make yourself at home, Mr. Wilcox. Have some celery, huh? All right, Molly. Thanks, I will. Don't spoil your dinner. Don't you. Okay. Come in. Well, hello there, Cupid. Hello, Fizzer. And if it isn't Harlow Wilscotch, as sure as I'm standing here wondering what is smelling like garlic as if there was anything else that did. <laughs> Hi, Nick. You're a little early, Mr. DePopolis, but uh, make yourself comfortable. Have a piece of cheese, Nick? No, thanks. I don't eat between meals, because if I do that, I don't eat my meals, and if I don't have any meals, I can't eat between any of them. <laughs> it's all very confusing. Can I do anything to be in the way, Fizzer? No, thanks, Nick. You and Harlow just relax. Oh, <clears throat> Boy, this is certainly a busy place. Yeah, <laughs> and something tells me this dinner would go down in history except for one thing. What is that being, Cupid? I don't think it'll go down. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Fizzer, if you want any advice about cooking a spaghetti... I don't. That's good, because my grandmother has a wonderful recipe and she's out of town. <laughs> <laughs> That's very helpful. Come in. Oh, there, McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Well, hello, everybody. Oh, Mr. Well, 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 well. Something smells awfully good in here. Oh, it's me. I just came from the barber shop. <laughs> yeah. Well, make yourself at home, Gildersleeve. Or make yourself useful. Well, what can I do, McGee? Look in that cupboard there and see if we got any jello. Oh, I can't reach. Hey, Harlow, have we got any jello? I don't know. Hey, Nick, we got any jello? Oh, that's me. Hey, Cupid, we got any jello? I don't know. Hey, McGee! Oh, for goodness sakes, never mind. And don't forget what show you're on. Sing, Dennis. <laughs> or sing, King's Men. <laughs> is, to say the least, a most peculiar fellow. He seems to know his instruments from piccolo to cello. He plays all composition. And he plays in every key. But he has one peculiarity. Oh, the leader doesn't like music. Ta-da-da, 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 ta-da-da. Oh, the maestro, he's in the like of the music. Ta-da-da, 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 ta-da-da. When he was a boy, he never could enjoy the fun that the other fellows had. His father, who was very stern, said his music you must learn, and that's what really made him mad. Oh, the leader doesn't like music. ta ra 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 ta ra 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 Though the people on the floor, ra da to da da may be clamoring for more, ra da to da da With his bat on in his hand, he will have you understand that the leader doesn't like music, and the leader doesn't like the band. The leader doesn't like opera. Figaro! 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 Figaro!
Figaro. Oh, the leader does a like Scott songs. Ha ha, a brick, a moon, big, big. Oh, the leader does a like jazz, jazz. A zazz, oo, zazz, a razzmatazz. A rooty doot doot and a rickety kick. He hates the rock toccata. And he hates a Brahms sonata. And the symphony by Haydn makes him swear. He despises Paganini or an opera by Rossini. And a Strauss waltz makes him tear his hair. Oh, the leader hates all kinds of music. Boop, boop. Ta-da-da, ta-da-da, ta-da-da. He doesn't like it sweet. Oh, he doesn't like it hot. Well, to that weird, weird, weird. Can have you understand that the leader doesn't like music, and the maestro doesn't like the band boys, and the band boys don't like the leader either, and the leader man doesn't like the band. Hey, Molly. Uh, what is it, McGee? Now, get that big platter of yours in here, will you? Now, look here, McGee. You can't talk to me like that. I can't... <laughs> what did I say? I just asked you to bring in that big platter so I could dish up the spaghetti. Huh? Oh. <laughs> well, you'll find the platter on the kitchen cabinet. Thanks. Hey, fellas, go sit down at the table. You're about to eat the best spaghetti you ever flung a fang in. Oh, that's fine. Hey, and you, Gildersleeve, lay off of them olives. You're a hard man, McGee. <laughs> or am I just being a silly girl? <laughs> Here's a chair for you, Molly. No, no, no. Sit by me, Cupid. If I'm sitting with all these men, I'm liable to forget my mannerisms and start reaching across the table. But with the ladies present, I'm always a gentleman and spear things with my fork. <laughs> <laughs> now, thank you, boys. This is a stag party. Besides, the old-timer is going to take me to the movies. Oh, my wife was going tonight, but she read that my son, my son was at the Bijou, and she thought it was a double feature. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the old timer now, Molly. You dish up the spaghetti for the boys while I. Uh, oh boy! Am I... Hi, Mister. Oh, hello there, little girl. I'm sorry I ain't got any time to talk to you tonight. Why? Well, I'm giving a spaghetti dinner to a bunch of friends, so you, you run along now. Oh, I'm your friend too, I bet you. Can I come and can I please? <laughs> no, no, this is a stag party. Oh, do stags eat spaghetti, huh? <laughs> These do. Now, you run along, sis. Well, can I bring my daddy? He's a stag. Huh? He's an elk, anyway, and that's the same thing, I bet you. <laughs> now, look, sis, I got a lot of guests here, so <laughs> please. Listen. Huh? I saw your picture on a magazine cover today, I bet you. I don't care if you saw my picture on ten th What'd you say? Sure. <laughs> sure I did. You and Mrs. McGee. Oh, well, well... Well, tell me about it. Uh, where'd you see it? Where can I, what magazine was it? Can I come to your party if I tell you, huh? <laughs> well, gee, sis, I can't... That is hardly... I mean, well, I... I oh, come on, tell me. <laughs> no. <laughs> give you a nickel. No. A dime. Mm -mm. Quarter? No. Fifty cents? Mm, no. No. <laughs> Well, I can't stand here and haggle with you all night. One buck now, and that's my last offer. It's a deal, mister. Okay. Lay the dough on the line, and I'll tip my mitt. <laughs> okay, okay, here's a dollar. Now, where'd you see our picture on that magazine? I may have time to run downtown and get a copy. Oh, you won't have to, mister. It's movie and radio guide, and I just found it sticking in your mailbox. Here. So long, mister. <laughs> Timer, Molly. That was a little girl from across the street. Oh, all right, McGee. Now sit down and eat. I've served everybody. <laughs> Much obliged. Well, pitch in, fellas. There's plenty more where this come from. <laughs> uh, well, uh, is uh, this your own recipe, McGee? <laughs> you betcha. And down from generation to generation. <laughs> Starting with me. Hey, you didn't take hardly any, Harlow. 
Here, here uh, let me give you some more. No, 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 thanks, Fibber. I, uh, well, I guess I ate too many olives. I, I seem to have uh, lost my appetite. That's what a diet does to you, you know. Well, if you find out where your appetite is gone, we'll start to see if mine is there with it. <laughs> I, uh, I guess we got here a little too early and, uh, did too much sampling in the kitchens, McGee. I, uh... <laughs> well, I... I don't seem to be able to eat a thing. Oh, come on, fellas. Shucks. You can't do this to me. After all the time and trouble, I... Hey, there ain't anything wrong with the spaghetti, is there? Oh, oh it's no, marvelous. No, no, it's, it's wonderful. 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 Yeah. Oh, in, in fact, McGee, it's so good that I want to go home and tell my wife all about it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry I couldn't do justice to it. I know you'll excuse me. Thanks a lot, McGee. Wait a minute, Gildersleeve. I'll go with you. Hey, wait a minute. You can't do it. Why, this. you can't expect Gildersleeve to describe this wonderful spaghetti to his wife single-handed, can you, Fibber? No, sir. Come on, Throckmorton. We'll tell her all about it. Yes. Oh, but boys, now, wait. I hope you'll excuse me, too, Fisher and Chupi. I just have me think of remembering that I never eat spaghetti during Lent. <laughs> hey, but this ain't Lent, Nick. Why, this is... Fisher, a... please. Politics and religious is something I never argue about. <laughs> Good night, QB. This has been a wonderful party. Oh, Good night. Yeah. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. Huh. Of all the ungrateful, unappreciative, unfeeling... Unappetizing. Un huh? Well, I mean that they didn't seem to have much appetite, did they, dearie? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> now, that's all the more for me and you, Molly. Well, come on. Let's have at it. We'll show them guys. They can... Hey, what's the matter? Well, uh, I don't know, McGee. I guess I... Well, I guess it's just the excitement and all. But I don't seem to be able to eat a thing. I oh, don't. You ain't hardly touched the spaghetti. Well, you can't discourage me. I know how good... I know good food when I see it. <laughs> well, here goes. Hmm. What's the matter? I don't know. I guess I did too much eating while I was cooking. <laughs> uh, kind of lost my appetite for spaghetti all of a sudden. <laughs> what do you say we run down to Kramer's drugstore and get a hamburger? That's wonderful. I'm starved. Me too. <laughs> River and Molly will be back in just a moment. Has it ever occurred to you that when you're in the kitchen, most of the time you're on your feet? That's one of the reasons why the kitchen floor is often a problem floor. It gets more than average wear. And besides, you just can't help spilling things now and then. Millions of women have discovered the easy way to solve the problem of their kitchen floors with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. When you apply glow coat to a linoleum floor, you do two things. Number one, you protect the surface of the linoleum, keep its colors bright and fresh, and make it wear indefinitely. Number two, you save work, because it's so easy to keep a glow-coated floor clean and spotless. Spilled things are quickly wiped up with a damp cloth. And, of course, there's no rubbing or buffing with glow-coat. Nothing could be easier than using this famous floor polish. You simply put it on your floor, and in 20 minutes, the floor has gleaming, sparkling beauty. That's why glow-coat is called self-polishing. It actually does the work itself. You can use glow-coat on your painted and varnished wood floors, too. Get some from your dealer tomorrow. McGee? Huh? I think you better call the delicatessen and have them pick up all those groceries you didn't use. Huh? Oh, that's a good idea. Give me the phone. Hello, operator. Give me the gold bar of delicatessen. Oh, is that you, Mert? Oh. <laughs> How's every little thing, Mert? It is, eh? What's say, Mert? Your whole family? What? Oh, that's terrible. Oh, dear. Why, that's awful. Oh, my. Oh, boy, what a day this has been. Oh, heavenly days, McGee. What happened? Not a darn thing has happened to Mert's whole family all day today. <laughs> Ain't that awful? <laughs> okay, Mert. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, inviting you all to join us again next Tuesday night. Good night.
How can I ever be alone is from American Jubilee.